There are many deities that appear in Norse mythology, but barring his father Odin, there are none as recognisable as Thor, God of Thunder. Now in recent years with the rise in popularity of Marvel comics and movies, Thor is a character that has become a household name. If I ask someone to describe him to me, it's very likely that they would say Thor is a calm, brave, blonde, well-mannered hero, but this at times couldn't be any further from the truth. The depictions of Thor that we see in the Marvel Universe are somewhat borrowed from classic Norse and Germanic folklore, but of course changes had to be made, because at times Thor was indeed no hero. That is unless your idea of a hero is an angry gingerman who pummels and smashes anything that annoys him with his hammer. So I guess we can start with Thor's physical depiction. Throughout Germanic and Norse folklore, Thor is described as extremely muscular, physically the strongest of all of the Norse deities. His beard and hair were in fact red, which were reflections of his fiery temper. There are however a few poems that mention Thor's hair being fairer than gold, which of course led many to believe that his hair was in fact blonde. But often the term fair in Norse did not mean light in colour, but instead referred to something that was beautiful. So these poems could either refer to Thor's hair being blonde, or they could just be an observation of how magnificent Thor's hair actually was. Thor's name originated from a variety of words meaning thunder, Duna in Old German, and Thuna in Old Saxon. His name was also associated with the day of the week Thursday. When the Germanic people adopted a calendar system similar to the Roman calendar, they replaced the names of the Roman gods of their own. The day of Jupiter, who was of course regarded as the god of the sky and thunder, soon became Thorsdag, meaning Thor's day, which is where the modern English for Thursday comes from. Throughout the recorded history of the Germanic people, Thor was always a heavily mentioned and predominant deity, but it wasn't until the Viking Age that Thor reached his height in popularity amongst the Scandinavian people, who valued and admired the courage, strength and brute force that Thor regularly displayed. Thor was seen as a god who was most commonly associated with thunder, strength and power, the oak tree, and of course war. Now I'm sure many of you already know that Thor's father is of course Odin, but his mother Fjörgin, or Yoro as she was sometimes referred to, is quite an obscure figure. She's never really mentioned in too much detail, and the only things that we know is that she was one of the Jotna, and possibly a personification of the earth. With Thor's mother being one of the Jotna, or the giants to some of you, and Odin being half Jotun, that will of course make our god of thunder three quarters Jotun. Which is quite ironic, considering that Thor despised the Jotna, and the feelings were more than mutual, as Thor was considered the greatest slayer of all of the Jotna, continuously protecting Asgard from their attempts of invasion and sabotage. We mentioned earlier that Thor was the strongest and the mightiest of all of the Norse deities, but how exactly was he so strong, and why was he feared by so many? The majority of Thor's power can be attributed to three main objects, the first of which being the belt that he wears, Meginjord, with Megin meaning strength or power, and Jord meaning belt, it literally translates to mean a belt of power. The second object is a pair of iron gloves, known as Jangripir, meaning iron gauntlets or iron grip, which we can assume makes Thor almost unstoppable in hand-to-hand -hand combat. The final object is one that I'm sure many of you will be familiar with, Thor's hammer, Mjolnir. The word Mjolnir is thought to have derived from the Germanic word Malanan, meaning to grind, earning the hammer the nicknames the Grinder or the Crusher which is exactly what you would expect Thor used the hammer for. The hammer itself was created by the two dwarven brothers, Brokir and Sindri, but the only reason it was made in the first place was down to Loki. Loki being his mischievous self decided that one day he would cut off the hair of the goddess Sif, Thor's wife. As you can imagine when our short-tempered gingerman found out what had happened, he threatened to smash Loki into pieces. Thor however was eventually calmed down by Loki when he promised to travel to Svartalheim and have the dwarves make Sif a new and improved head of hair. Whilst he was in Svartalheim, Loki challenged the brothers Brokir and Sindri to create objects finer than those already made by the sons of Ivaldi. The brothers accepted Loki's challenge and set to work, but Loki transformed himself into a wasp in his attempt to disrupt them. He did eventually sting one of the brothers in the eye, and that is one of the reasons given to Thor's hammer having a short handle. When Loki returned with Sif's new head of hair, in order to appease the already furious Thor, he gave him Mjolnir, and a god of thunder took a liking to this hammer. Mjolnir could never be broken, no matter how hard Thor struck with the hammer, and when it was thrown it would never miss its target, always returning to Thor's hand. Along with all of these powerful objects, Thor also owned a pair of goats, Tangrisnir, the teeth bearer, and Tangjostir, the teeth grinder. These goats served Thor well, not only because they pulled his chariot, but because he would often slay and eat the goats as sustenance, only to resurrect them the next morning with his hammer. There is a story where Thor once visited the home of some peasant farmers while on his travels, 
He shared his goat's meat with them, and one of the young children broke one of the bones and sucked out the marrow. When the goats were resurrected the next morning, Thor noticed one of them was lame, and when he realised the child was to blame, he was furious. The peasants begged the god for forgiveness, and Thor did eventually decide that he would not kill the child, but instead take both of their children as his servants. There were several gods and beings that could be seen as the children of Thor, the most recognisable being Modi and Magni, whose names meant brave and great. These children however did not belong to his wife Sif, but rather the Jotun, Jan Saxa. The god Ulur was not the son of Thor, but he became somewhat adopted, as he was the son of Sif and an unnamed man. The two mortal children taken from the peasants may have been seen as servants, but they were also adopted children raised by Thor and his wife. Lastly, it was believed that Thor and Sif may have had one daughter, named Thrud, whose name was thought to mean confident and strong, traits that once again embodied her father. Over the years, Thor had many encounters with the Jotnar, one of the most famous being the tale of Hrungnir, who was regarded the mightiest of all of his kind. One day while travelling, Odin came across Hrungnir, and challenged him to a race back to Asgard, a race that the Allfather won, but Odin being a graceful victor, invited Hrungnir to stay in Asgard and enjoy his hospitality. The more drunk Hrungnir became, the more he boasted about how he was greater than all of the gods, even telling Thor's wife that he wished to take her back to Jotunheim. The gods eventually grew tired of his behaviour, but as a guest of Odin, they allowed him to continue. That is until Thor appeared, who came very close to smashing the Jotun to pieces, but Thor not wanting to kill an unarmed man, instead accepted a duel from Hrungnir. Once on the battlefield, Hrungnir wore enormous stone armour, but even this was not enough to protect him, as Thor swung his hammer so hard against Hrungnir's head that it shattered into pieces. A piece of this stone lodged itself in Thor's face, where it would remain until Ragnarok. There is another variation of this story, where the giant fell on top of Thor after being hit by Mjolnir. Thor and the rest of the gods attempted to lift Hrungnir's body, but despite their best efforts they were unable to do so. That is until Thor's son Magni came to his father's aid, lifting the giant easily despite only being three days old. Another story that involves the Jotnar, but also Thor dressing up as a woman, is a story known as the theft of Thor's hammer. One day Thor awoke and realised that his trusty hammer was not by his side. Immediately assuming that this must have been the work of a trickster, he confronted Loki. On this occasion, Loki was not the culprit and wanted to help Thor, so he obtained the feather of Freya, granting him flight and allowing him to travel to Jotunheim. When he arrived, he spoke to the Jotun king, Thrym, who confessed that he had stolen the hammer, and that he would only trade the hammer for Freya's hand in marriage. Upon returning to Asgard, both Thor and Loki asked Freya for her assistance, but she refused to go anywhere near Jotunheim. With Mjolnir missing, the gods feared that the Jotuns could attack at any time, and held a meeting to discuss how they would retrieve the hammer. The god Heimdall suggested that Thor dressed as a woman to disguise himself as Freya. Of course, at first Thor rejected this notion, for he was the mighty god of thunder. With every other option being exhausted, Thor eventually agreed, and with Loki dressed as his handmaiden, the two journeyed to Jotunheim. When the Jotun king saw Thor in his wedding dress, he was eager to proceed with the marriage ceremony, and so the feast began. Thor was so hungry that he ate an entire ox, half a dozen fish, and an entire cake. The Jotun king was impressed by his new bride's appetite, but also confused. Loki in his guile explained the situation, by claiming that she had fasted for an entire week before the wedding. Once Loki and Thor paid the customary bridal fee, Thrym kept his end of the bargain and gave his hammer to his new bride. Thor unable to resist, removed his disguise, took his hammer, and destroyed everything and everyone that he could get his hands on. The Jotnir may be fierce enemies of Thor, but there is one enemy that Thor despised like no other, the enormous serpent Jormungand, one of Loki's many children. The two hated each other so much that they were destined to take each other's lives come Ragnarok. The hatred between the two began during the story of Utgard Loki. During this story Thor performs several deeds, the first of which being to lift the king's cat off the ground. Thor eventually fails this task, but Utgard Loki reveals that the cat was actually Jormungand. Thor not taken too kindly to losing, resented Utgard Loki, as well as the world serpent. Thor and Jormungand would meet one more time before Ragnarok. This time Thor was out fishing with the Jotun Hymir, However, what they caught was no fish, it was indeed Jormungand. Seeing the World Serpent once again face to face only angered Thor, and a battle between the two began, a battle that Thor looked like he would emerge victorious from. Hymir, however, had a different idea. Scared by how close the boat was to tipping over, he cut the fishing line and returned the serpent to the bottom of the ocean. Thor was so incensed by Hymir's actions, allowing Jormungand to escape, that in some accounts he swung his hammer so hard that the Jotun flew overboard and was left to drown. This, however, was not the last meeting between the two. Come Ragnarok, the two face each other once again in their final battle. This time Thor managed to slay the serpent, but the wounds he sustained would eventually lead to the God of Thunder also dying. 
He Sam would then be passed down to his two sons, Modi and Magni, who were amongst the gods who survived Ragnarok. Thor is a god that many people viewed as an example of what a great warrior should be, strong, brave, and always willing to protect his people. Now it's no secret that wisdom is not something that was passed down to Thor by his father, and his lack of wisdom coupled with his short temper does lead Thor into some precarious situations. Despite this, Thor was still the greatest defender of Asgard, with the other gods and goddesses reliant on him to keep them safe from the constant threat of the Jotnar. Although he may not be the funny and charming hero that we see portrayed by Chris Hemsworth, Thor is and will always remain one of the greatest heroes to feature in all myth and legend. With Thor being such a heavily mentioned deity, please feel free to share any thoughts and stories regarding the God of Thunder with me in the comments below. As always, I've been your host, Mythology and Fiction Explained.